<laughs> All right, climate change. So there's a lot of theories going around. It's like, is climate change real? Or is it fake? It is real. It's real, is it? Supposedly. Supposedly, okay. Have you heard of, like, before this, people were talking about global warming at first? Yeah. And then during the past two or three years, like, the global warming just totally phased out and then changed into climate change. Mm-hmm. So the term has been, like, sort of replaced. Like, yeah. do you think something's happening in the background? Yes. As yes. a matter of fact, I do. I believe that there is some political agenda utilizing uh, people's love for the environment in order to achieve some goal which I don't know what it is uh, at the moment yet but something is happening and people are being manipulated as they always are and the media is playing a large role in hyping up things that are not really either not really happening or uh, maybe it's happening to a very small scale but then they're fanning the flames and stoking the fire in order to get in order to get more response from the public i want to say i see okay so recently i went to uh i talked to a guy from the university of western australia he's mm-hmm. a geologist and he asked me do you think climate change is real and then i said like no a lot of people are talking about it when they do not know much about it mm-hmm. so more you need, they need to really like dig in deeper yeah then they should like have an opinion about it instead of just listening and just being a radio just listening and just pouring out whatever you're, you're copy being. pasting yes so I had a look at about the previous temperature trends mm-hmm. on earth it spans from actually 2005 to 2014 so it's around 4k 4.5k oh. uh, years the duration right so from this end to this end to where we are now as you can see the temperature is like it goes in a cycle where it just wants to go up and down and down like a roller coaster yeah it's one of the we around here this point we're going up here Mm -hmm. as you can see we have been hotter than we have been for Mm -hmm. and we've been a lot colder recently as well Mm -hmm. the more recent ones than we have it's called a little ice age as you can see that a lot of this ice age actually contributed by volcanoes you know Uh so he told me that all of this yes it is happening like you know the earth is getting warmer but is it really human cause is it what is it related to mm-hmm. and do you know that there's like maybe two or three big volcanoes eruption to just resetting everything back to zero again mm-hmm. that's what it told me and like it really drew me back and i want to talk to you about this mm-hmm. how is this whole climate change thing coming back together to you so i'm going to hand it over to you now and there you go okay so it is in my opinion that this earth practices cycles i'm sure you might have heard the phrase time is cyclic time is cyclic right okay things happen in cycles like you just showed me Mm -hmm. your graph and here i have a graph that is co2 parts per million okay what the fuck yeah this is co2 parts yeah, this is a graph of uh, carbon dioxide levels for the past 400,000 years. As you can tell, it is high, then it goes low, and then it's high, and then it's low. It's high, and it's low, and it's high, and it's low. And right now, we are quite high. Yeah, it's quite pretty drastic, isn't it? Yeah, right it's now? pretty drastic. Uh, but in any case, this, this giant spike here, right this part here you can attribute to the rise of industrialization because yep. this is 1950 right at the end of the war mm. so every country in the world started industrializing right around this point including our own so before this carbon dioxide has been like pretty much in this kind of range yeah but only recently when industrial industrialization came in the cycle just threw out the window yeah okay but that's not to say that there shouldn't be something else assuming like we didn't uh industrialize this sh- graph should also look like this so there's nothing to say that something will happen or nothing will happen that will cause it to drop down as it has happened multiple times in the past mm-hmm. so to assume that it's just gonna keep going and then we'll end up like venus is quite a stretch in my opinion okay here is a graph of sea level changes one of the main things that people say 
nowadays are if it gets too hot ice the ice m- will melt and we'll all drown uh, stuff like that stuff like that yep <laughs> I mean coastal areas will uh, go underwater this happened quite recently this this red areas were all 15,000 years ago this were all above land which is how animals and humans managed to migrate across without inventing boats mm-hmm. yeah so all of this this area was called Sunda land this was a big part of China there was a dogger land here connecting the UK to mainland Europe right so as you can tell around this part around 15,000 years ago the level the sea level was quite low and then something happened to make it rise drastically and yeah this is the period that we're at right now which has been relatively stable this also correlates roughly to the point in most civilizations that we call the flood myths the flood myths okay you've heard this before right like yep. Noah's Ark yeah the yep. story exists among every culture in every part of the planet there's a very big flood that happens yeah there's yep. a flood that happens and they all large amount of people die mm-hmm. you can as even right now most of human civilization lives either on the coasts I mean the majority of human civilization lives on the coasts or near rivers and very few compared to the vast majority of humanity lives inland like when you're near to the river or coast it's more easy to get resources yes yeah and it's easy for trade and everything so you imagine this would probably be the case back then as well more more than likely they would establish cities on the coasts and during this event which uh, some have speculated and theorized was caused by uh, an asteroid hitting Greenland and melting the ice cap Mm. they found the crater recently this was uh, fairly recent news like within this year 2019 so they found the crater trying to carbon date the crater back to yeah this period okay so yeah uh, once that all the ice melts all these areas got flooded and all the people who were not able to leave probably would have drowned and those who did survive would carry that memory of everyone drowning Mm -hmm. and pass it down to their future generations which is how everyone on every continent every part of the planet have the same story after a massive flood after a massive flood Mm -hmm. so they basically moved to a higher ground yeah they'll move to higher ground so you can see some correlation here between uh, temperature and CO2 records this goes back 800,000 years we are here now and this was the past 800,000 years it swings 400,000 years it swings even more wildly so we are right at this peak here so CO2 is high and temperature is high yes okay so there is a correlation between CO2 and temperature yeah wow so more than likely since we are at a relatively high peak here we are more likely to go down than to balloon out of control yeah unless we keep polluting and and emit more co2 yeah uh one of the things that they that the climate change people bring up is that there is a what is it called that greenhouse uh, exponential growth sort of factor where at a certain point after a certain point of gets out of control yeah it can get out of control like venus Mm -hmm. because once there is enough CO2 or greenhouse gases and the ice melts and all of that, the earth, the sun, the sun's heat gets trapped on the earth. It is less likely to leave the planet. And so it heats up the earth even more. And that causes more greenhouse gases, which heats up the planet even more. And before long, we'll end up like Venus with a ridiculously high temperature. Mm-hmm even higher than Mar- Mercury which is closer to the Sun yep Venus has a higher temperature than Mercury mm. well that is their fear but I would like to point out that in 2018 the entire year's project 
estimated release of CO2 into the atmosphere is 37.1 billion tons. 37.1 billion tons. And the this was the highest that it's ever been throughout history. Oh yeah, good. Oh, we'll use billion as a unit, okay? Mm-hmm. And the this is based on my very quick googling. Uh, the atmosphere of the planet is a volume of five thousand one hundred and forty trillion tons. That's five one four zero 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 billion tons. So if you do the math of how much CO2 we release into the atmosphere, that is 0.00072. correct. Percent of the atmosphere that we have transmuted into CO2. Uh, even if you were to as- assume that this was the case for the last 100 years, that we've been releasing 37.1 billion tons uh, for the last 100 years every year. That is still 0.072%. 0.072% over 100 years, which is, dare I say, negligible. Negligible, okay. So that's your math and calculation so yes. far. We're not, they're not trying to just do your own research and See what floats your boat. Mm-hmm. See what convinces you. Here are ice age temperature changes from Antarctica, along with ice volumes. So you can see here that when the ice volume is high, the temperature is also very low. And when the ice volume is low, the temperatures are high. You so temperature and ice have a correlation. Yeah, very clear yes, correlation. Very clear correlation. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. Okay, what else can you gather from this? You can also gather that since we are at this high point right now, we are more than likely to enter a period of cold age since we've actually had... We've actually had... Let's go back to that previous graph. Where is that? Right, we are here. Here is the present. This is our past. 450,000 years ago. So they're both P, present and past. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) We are here now. Yeah, N, capital N. And this is the past. So, uh, yeah, it goes in cycles. There's always a cold and a hot and a cold and a hot. Low ice volume, high ice volume, so on and so forth. Right now, we are at a period of low ice volume as all the ice are melting. But people are assuming that we're just going to you know, all the ice is going to melt and then we'll all die and that's the end. But I propose that after a certain point, we are going to go down. Oh fuck, no, that's not what I meant to do. After a certain point, something will happen and we will start to go down and enter a cold age. As demonstrated by... Is this the correct one? Oops. demonstrated by this here very blurry graph. Uh, These are the graph of temperatures. This is the present here now. And this is the past of 20,000 years. 20,000. 20,000 years ago. Okay. The period was very cold. If I'm not wrong, this around here is zero degrees. Zero degrees Celsius. So, uh, 20,000 years ago, this was the ice age. This was the ice age. Everything was cold, Mm -hmm. no doubt. And then at some point, for some reason, there was a massive warming and that sparked the end of the ice age. But that was also followed by this gap here of incredibly cold period, which was called the Younger Dryas. After that ended, we entered the Holocene era or the period of modern history. Modern history. Where civilization starts and culture and all that fun stuff. We discover fire, build cities and all that. This is where we are right now, right here. So as you can tell, that we have had a fairly long warm period relative to our past. A long and stable period, actually. Yeah, a long and stable period. This is just the last 20,000 years. 
we've been it's been in an ice age for a long time and we've only been in a warm period for a short period of time so in reality where is the graph that goes any which direction next one oh no this is this is the graph yeah this is uh, the close up of that earlier graph a huge spike in heating and this is our present stable temperature zone. we've had a long stable warm period and in truth be told we should be entering a cold age but I'm no expert so I can more than likely become a bit warmer before it happens <laughs> there's no real prediction that you can make it's just the earth is going to do whatever the earth is going to do and there's really little any of us can do to affect it the earth is very big and powerful so you and we, we can try our best to destroy it but it's going to have much easier time destroying us if it so wants if it so wants if it so wills it so actually you said a lot about the, the trend that it, when it goes up it goes back down yeah do you think that it maybe that's intervention is that okay guys we're polluting too much and let's let's dial it back down I or think the, something maybe what the was earth, the incident I think the earth just does it by itself so it wipes humanity and it resets ooh I, I wouldn't go so far as to say so that so this was a uh, human's error this was um, you know somewhere between we, maybe dinosaurs uh, you know 200,000 years ago was the start of the human era okay yep yeah. So modern humans first appeared around this period right during okay. a cold age and then we had a warm age and then we had a cold age and this was the last ice age and now we're in a second warm period so mm. you can predict or assume what would have happened in that last warm period do you think maybe we could have had civilizations like we did now some people say yes and then something happened a flood a great flood destroyed everything and we had to start from scratch that could be that could be the it looks like it's pointing that way right now mm -hmm. so earth is very giant and mighty and powerful and humans have very little power over earth yeah contrary to the popular belief that humans are the ones that are gonna you know affect earth and earth is gonna treat us back how it how it how we treat the earth mm -hmm. like same as that some people are saying that Oh, but next generation may not no more tiger afterwards. You know, like they yeah. might not even see a tiger. Like, dude, I can I didn't get to see any dinosaurs, man. <laughs> I want to see some dinosaurs. Yeah. So, in conclusion, what do you can you gather from this? Do your own research and do not believe what people tell you just because they look smart. That is called appeal to authority and is a logical fallacy. So, what if your research is wrong, even though you do your own research? Do more research. Do more Do research. Go into every possible source and analytics and uh, different researchers. Find those that contradict each other. Do your own research. See what makes sense, what does not. Yeah, because that is the thing in, in a lot of science, you know. Pe yeah. People think that science is just a single source of truth mm -hmm. where everyone just agrees on something. There's always that outlier or even half the group that says that, dude, that's wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go to a physics conference, it's very common, like, for one person to present the whole paper. Yeah. And then at the end of the paper, one guy just jumps out and get out. Everything you did is wrong and it's all gar complete garbage. And then they started arguing right there and there. Wow. Uh, yeah, that's very common for physics conference, you know, like mm -hmm. that, it's very common. Like almost every physics conference happens like that. Wow. So people have the, the misconception. Yeah, misconception that science is a single source of truth. Yeah. Where everyone agrees A equals to A, B equals to B. Well, in actual fact that everyone people, disagrees all the time a lot of people disagrees a lot of time and it's fine it's fine to disagree to to you know that's why we have research that's why we have discussions that's why we prove stuff and we do stuff yeah so that we can discover the real truth and the real truth behind the real truth and that yeah so any last words nope I just wish that people are not so easily misled by hype hype and media media hype also, humans are awesome. Long live humanity. <laughs>